Hey guys, David. This is Express Auto Transmission. We like to play with transmissions here and we like having you guys here watching our videos. So thank you guys for watching. Welcome back. We're gonna go see what's on the bench today. The idea behind that is to get as much oil to the fourth clutch as quick as you possibly can. And we've got a beautiful vacuum. What's up guys? We're back. We've made it back to the bench. Time to finish up this 6L80 valve body for Carlos. Carlos, you'll be seeing this transmission, well, you should already have this transmission in and be driving it by the time this video is on the air, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anywho, here's your valve body. One of the things that we wanted to do I know we said before that we weren't going to go into depth on vacuum testing on the 6L80 valve body at this point, and we're not going to, but there are three super key areas for vacuum testing. If you guys are just flying through these things and you're just trying to get them out the door as fast as you can, at least check these three areas. These three areas are super common wear areas. They cause really bad problems, and if you are in the middle of building one and you approach this problem, there's a couple of different ways to fix it. Number one would be to replace the valve body. Nobody likes that idea. Number two, you can buy the parts from Sonax, ream it, bore it, put a sleeve and a bushing in, and that's a really good option. Or option C would be try to find a used valve body and see if it's any better. I use the Sonax method if I have a valve that is leaking or a valve that does not vacuum test the way it needs to. So I wanna show you these three areas to at least make sure you're hitting some of the key elements whenever you're putting one of these things together. So we're gonna go over this stuff real quick and then we're gonna install our Sonax zip kit. So we've got our Sonax vacuum tester calibrated. We've already set everything. The first valve that we're going to be playing with here in the bottom of this circuit has a cavity here and here. So to vacuum test this thing, you gotta get that hole centered right over the top of it. We've calibrated our vacuum gauge to 20 inches. We're gonna set that right over that. We're putting this on the mat to seal that surface on the back side. So we've got our vacuum gauge calibrated to 25 and it's showing 23 steadily. So that circuit is definitely where it needs to be. Next circuit we're gonna move on to is for the 2.6 clutch regulator get my valve body laid the right direction here and it is at this cavity I'm looking at this right yep I never can remember this one for some reason we vacuum test this thing every time I can't not remember it get our seal on there as best we can That's absolutely perfect as well. Good deal. And now the one, two, three, four clutch boost valve. This valve is kind of tricky to vacuum test because you got that block off of that dowel pin right there. So make sure you're not stuck against that ledge, otherwise, you won't get a very good vacuum test. Rate. We're going to check on that side of the valve and we're going to check on the top side of the valve because. If it wears on the top side of the valve, it causes a flaring problem. So, we've got just a small amount of leak right there, but not enough to say, hey, we've got a big catastrophe getting ready to happen. Go over just one little area real quick. These accumulators, or these little aluminum end plugs that we're getting ready to change. We'll vacuum test one right now. You'll notice that our vacuum is falling. It's because it's actually leaking out of that plug on the end so we'll change one of those just to show you guys the difference here and we'll continue on with our zip kit so what number like if that went down would you say there's a problem if it drops more than three inches of vacuum it's over so there's if you're a problem. at like 21 22 yep there's a problem stop back up time to figure out what's going on there so it's a I have a tighter tolerance than some. Some guys say you can have up to five to seven inches of vacuum loss. 
I think that's just a giant leak. So Sonax actually has, if you guys want to look this up, Sonax has on Sonax.com, they have specific instructions to show you exactly where this needle needs to be pointing whenever you're setting your gauge up. I calibrate mine before every use and I always try to aim right at 25. Sometimes I can't get to 25 because I've got the Pittsburgh pump, but typically I can get that thing set 24 or 25 pretty freaking close. So we'll change this end plug here. Now, let's vacuum test that port one more time. Guys, We've went ahead and calibrated our vacuum test stand one more time just for the sake of making sure that we're doing everything we're supposed to do. So we are going to now stick the vacuum gauge over that and see where we're at. That is absolutely perfect. So we're at 22 on that one and that one has got the new end plug in it. We'll go down to one that doesn't have a new end plug in it. So that one is reading 25 inches of vacuum, or sorry, 26 inches of vacuum. So that one is actually leaking more than the one that does not have the O-ring on it. Or the one that has the O-ring on it. Sorry, I said that backwards. So less leak, more leak. Less leak. See right there, we have less leak on this circuit, and right here we have way more leak on this circuit. So we're gonna replace the end plugs in here and we're gonna work our way through it. Just going back over our valves down here. Oh yeah, gotta cover the hole on the back. As close to 20 as we can get. Doesn't get much better than that. So, move this out of the way and We'll start assembling this valve body. Just like so. Now, we're gonna move on to the other side. This is where the fun begins, on this side. Starting with our bags. Make sure that both pieces are free. Now we'll get down to where we like to mix things up a little bit, guys. And I know I've said this before, but for the guys of you that are new here or haven't watched one of our 6L80 videos before. The clutch select valves is a super big problem area in the 6L80s. And it's not just the old ones, it's not just the new ones, it's all 6L80s. They have a problem. And the biggest problem is that they just get a lot of debris. They get beat on their whole life. Nobody loves them. And they just flat have problems. So anytime we build one, we like to take the factory aluminum valves out throw them in the trash, and we're gonna grab some transgo valves and stuff those guys in there. So we'll be right back with some transgo valves. Now we've got our transgo valves. What is super important here with the new transgo valves, these things need to be just as free as possible. If you don't hear that thing bounce off the bottom, you've got a problem. So make sure that they are free as can be. Being the type of application this thing is, we are going to be using the Sonax Red Springs and the end plugs that come in the Sonax kit. Get one that's a little stuck like this. See that's not real smooth. Pretend it's a paint can. Now nah, she's moving. All right. We can hear it bouncing. Something good's happening in there. 
Alrighty, now that we've got our clutch select valves in, we can finish assembly. We're going to put our new check balls in. I lost my balls. Hold on, I gotta find my balls. Okay, now that we have had our small mini crisis about losing some balls, we're back. Let's get these balls out. We are going to be putting a ball here, a ball here, here ball, there ball, everywhere a ball ball. Just can't have enough balls. That, that hole right there though, that is the hole for discussion. So if you were doing this, Sonax was gracious enough to include in their kit instructions of this is where the check ball is. If your plate has that style of hole, do not install the ball. This blade has the orifice hole. Let's get the wind out of here. Then it takes the ball. We are using the early second design plate because our transmission came with the early first design. So we're going to transition to the early second design plate and the number eight ball does not go in the hole. So we're gonna get our plate out, put it on there, put these two halves together. That is where hole number eight is. No, oh, no, somebody disorganized our bolts. That's okay though. I know a guy that knows where they go. Now, all we have left for our Sonax kit is our center support helpers, what I'm gonna call them. There's probably a more technical name for them, but I'm gonna call them the helpers because they help stabilize the seal that goes through the center of the case. We're going to get these guys tapped into place. Like so. And we are going to do our final torque of our valve body bolts. You guys will notice that I was using a speed handle during the assembly here. The big reason that we use a speed handle assembling the valve body is using an impact. If you're not careful and you're not 100% trigger safe, you can warp a valve body very, very quickly. And the way I was taught was to always use the speed handle, take it down gentle, make sure that everything forks up nice and evenly. So we're gonna push this thing over and get this thing wrapped up. So we're going to be ending our video tonight. A little, little short, and Carlos, you know why we left her a little short. Somebody forgot to send David and that AC Delco Tech. But tomorrow morning, that thing's gonna be here. We're gonna finish this thing up and we're gonna get it on a pallet and we're gonna ship it your way. So with that being said, I hope everybody has enjoyed the assembly of the valve body. This isn't a complete 100% assembly. It's not a 100% vacuum test, but it's the, gen the general areas that are really important in my opinion. The Tecum is another big area. If it's a local rebuild, I personally test each solenoid, install a new set of pressure switches, verify everything's good, and we move on. Anything that I feel is a 
hard driver or a high mileage driver or anything like that automatically gets an AC Delco tech every time, no questions asked. I'm really big on replacing them. I hope you guys understand what we're doing and what we're going for, and we'll see you guys on the next one.